this is Sindam Patel and welcome back to the video lecture series of the fundamentals of machine design. In this lecture, we will see the solving method and the procedure to solve the examples of the beams and column. And you must have seen our previous lecture where we have uh, explained each and every formulas that can be utilized in our this in this particular lecture. And if you have not seen, then I recommend each and every students to uh, to watch the previous lecture uh, uh, in which we have explained the Euler's formula, the limitations of the Euler's formula, Rankine's, and the Johnson's formula, and how uh, in which case we are going to utilize which formula. So the, uh, those concepts were discussed already in the previous lecture. We are not going to discuss and waste time in this lecture. And let's get started with this lecture first, uh, with the first slide. So the, in the first slide, you will see that the example data is provided like this. And it is, uh, this example was asked in your examination uh, in the seven mass. And the, uh, the first example contains that uh, the, the given data itself indicates that the find the suitable size of the 300 mm long push rod. So the push rod whose length is 300 mm, uh, the length is provided uh, uh, of a petrol engine of a petrol engine carrying a maximum load of 1400 Newton. Uh, the load is provided, the load which is applied actually is given, it is hollow in a section having the outer diameter 1.25 times the inner diameter. So the uh, cross section of the push rod is provided as a hollow cross section and the, in relation between the outer diameter and inner diameter is also given. The spherical seated bearings are used for the push rod. So the bearings indicates the roller joint or rotation in the joints. The modulus of elasticity for the material of the push rod is uh, 210 kilonewton per mm square. So Young's modulus is given, assume the factor of safety as a 2.5. So the steps of calculation is also on the screen. As you can see, the first step indicates that the ultimate load for the uh, calculation is PE and the PE value, PE value is calculated using the factor of safety that is the 1400 into 2.5. So if you calculate you will get the answer as a 3500 Newton. The equivalent length is given by the actual length for the uh, both hinge, uh, both and hinge. For both and hinge equivalent length is equals to the actual length and uh, that was given as a 300 mm. The step number two is to find the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia for the uh, cross section which is hollow, uh, the hollow cross section can be written as pi by 64 outer diameter raised to 4 minus inner diameter raised to 4. But the relation between the outer diameter rest, uh, and inner diameter is 1.25 times d. And that's why what we are going to do, we are going to calculate it using that empirical relation that was provided in the given data. Now, if you put the value of the D, uh, the, if you put the values in this uh, equation, you will get the answer in terms of the D raised to 4. So, your answer will be in terms of the D raised to 4, your diameter is still uncalculated. You will get the answer in terms of the D raised to 4. Now what we are going to do in the step number 3, we will use the equation of the Euler's equation. Why we are using the Euler equation? Because we considered the push rod as a long column. If you consider the length of the column, if you consider the length of the column uh, or the length of the push rod, it will be 300 mm. But if you consider the cross section diameter, cross section dimensions of the push rod, it will be somewhat larger or somewhat uh, the length of the push rod is larger than the dimensions of the cross section. And that's why we can consider the push rod as a, a long column. Now if you consider the push rod as a long column, then the Euler's formula holds good for this type of a design. And the Euler's equation is nothing but the PE equals to pi square EI upon LE square. 
Now, if you put the values into this equation, then you will be able to calculate the answer in terms of the D. Now, the answer D is uh, known as a 20. Uh, 188 uh, but this is nothing but the 4 uh, power answer and the, if you take the 4th root of the D2 you will get the answer as a 6.84 mm by multiplying it with the 1.25 you will get the outer diameter as a 8.55 mm so this was the end of our this example and uh, uh, we can calculate this type of example using the Euler's equation but the only condition for the Euler equation is the one that your length of the column should be larger than the cross section dimension. So this could be this type of example could be easy to for each and every student to uh, solve in your examination. Now we will see another example. Uh, the data of that example is provided on the screen and uh, the data itself indicate that the 300 mm long alloy steel rod Alloy steel rod is used to support an axial compression load of 65 kN. So the load is provided as a 65 kN. One end of the rod is fixed and another end of the rod is free to support the load. So this is the fourth end condition which we have discussed in the upcoming previous lecture. So uh, the uh, assuming the compressive yield strength as a 550 Newton per mm square we assume that the compressive yield strength that is written uh, that can be written as SYC SYC as a 550 Newton per mm square modulus of elasticity that is E 210 gigapascal we need to convert it into the megapascal by multiplying it with the 10 dash to 3 determine the diameter of the rod by buckling consideration we need to consider only buckling and the buckling is considered in the rankine's formula use the rankine's formula they have already said that you need to consider the rankine's formula and the rankine's formula co uh, constant is uh, uh, a equals to 1 upon 7500 take the factor of safety as a 3.5 so we are going to use the first step that is the calculation of equivalent length for the end condition where the for one end is fixed and other end is free uh, the equivalent length can be written as a 2L this 2L is nothing but the 600 if you put the value of 300 into this equation then the factor of safety is nothing but the, uh, the working load upon uh, ultimate load upon working load and that's why the ultimate load can be calculated as a 2 to 7.5 kN. Now we will uh, calculate the uh, solids uh, for solid cross section we are going to find the moment of inertia I and I is represented by the pi by 64 d raised to 4. Now a k square is also known as the I then a k square a can be calculated using this equation if you make the subject as a k square then you will get the answer as a d raised to uh, d square by 16 if you take the uh, square root then your answer will be d by 4 if you put this value into this equation where the k is needed to be inserted then uh, your answer would look like this by the simplification it will comes out to be the equation in terms of the d square and by the simplification uh, you will have to uh, solve this example using the d raised to 4 equation and uh, by simple uh, algebraic equation solution method uh, that is plus, minus b plus or minus under root is uh, a square uh, b, uh, b square minus plus 4 ac upon 2a uh, will give you the answer of the d square and by taking the square root you will get the answer of the d that is the diameter of the component. So this was the solving method of our example where we have utilized the Rankine formula to solve the, for, uh, solve the example or to design the component. So this was the end of our example. Now we will see another example. Uh, you, in which we will have to solve using the Johnson's formula. 
uh, we will have to decide whether our Johnson's formula is applicable or Euler's formula is applicable. So this is going to be the very interesting example. Let's see the given data first, then we will be able to understand the example thoroughly. So first get started, let's get started with the given data. Uh, the given data indicates that the given data indicates that the 25 by 50 mm bar of the rectangular cross section is made of the plain carbon steel 40 C8 and sigma yt and E value is provided for this uh, plain carbon steel. The length of the bar is 5, 500 mm. The two ends of the bar are hinged and the factor of safety as a 2.5. The bar is subjected to an axial compressive force the determine the slenderness ratio which two equation Euler's and Johnson will be applicable and uh, what is the safe compressive force for the bar. So step number one is the find the uh, since the both ends of the column are hinged we will find the equivalent length as a L that was given as a 500 mm. The cross section of the beam uh, column is uh, rectangular and that's why the equation for the moment of inertia will be BD cube by 12. So B is 25 and D is 50. We can directly utilize this equation as a BD cube by 12 and your answer will come in mm raised to 4. So our next step is to calculate the minimum moment of inertia by calculating the I by Y where you will get, you will have to utilize the equation in a db cube by 12 and uh, if you consider this equation then you will get the answer as a 65.1 into 10 raised to 3 mm raised to 4 and that uh, from those moment of inertia you will have to consider the minimum answer and by taking the minimum answer our first step completes over here. Our second step is check whether the Euler's formula is applicable or not. And for this, we will have to find the slenderness ratio and compare it with this term. Uh, in order to find the slenderness ratio, you will require the k value and k can be calculated using the i equals to ak square. Uh, from this equation, you will be able to calculate the k that is 7.21 and if you put this value of k in the slenderness ratio equation, the answer comes out to be the 69.28. Now the turn is to calculate this term for, for, uh, with which we are going to compare the slenderness ratio. If you put each and every term which is available in the given data as well as in the uh, calculation, uh, you, will be, you will get this term answer as a 73.32. Now if you compare those answers then your slenderness ratio is less than this value. And that's why Euler's formula is not applicable because whenever the slenderness ratio is less than this uh, threshold value, your beam is considered as a short column and Euler's formula is not applicable for the short column and that's why it is clear that we cannot utilize the Euler's formula. Now we will go for the Johnson's formula which is our only option and to solve this example using the Johnson formula, the Johnson equation is applicable like this. So the Johnson's formula is uh, explained on the screen like this. Uh, if you take the sigma c out then you will be able to calculate it use easily. Then the pj value is 368.77 kN. Now the factor of safety that is crippling load upon safe load, factor of safety is given as a 2.5. And that's why the safe load that the column can carry is 147.51 kN. With which, we, with this, we conclude our lecture over here where we uh, completed our chapter of the beams and column. Thank you.